Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video is going to be my makeup monthly for the month of November. I'm gonna be going through the items that were my favorites, also the items that failed me, and then everything in between the items that I thought were just okay. So if you already see my makeup monthly for the month of November, crazy. Let's go ahead and get started. Okay, before we jump into the makeup monthly, I did wanna let you guys know about my 12 days of giveaways that is going on right now. Today is day five of my 12 days of giveaways, but I've been doing a giveaway every single day across either Instagram, YouTube, or my Snapchat. Uh, today's giveaway is going to be here on YouTube, so the link to get entered into the giveaway is in the description box down below. In today's giveaway, I'm giving away some skincare. This is a set from Pericone MD. They recently sent me um, two of their products, and then and they send it also in this nice set as well and said that I could give it away, which I thought was really cool. So the two products in here are the Cold Plasma Face, which is an advanced serum concentrate, and then also the Cold Plasma Eye, which is an advanced eye cream. I showed these on my Instagram, I believe it was, when I did a haul, and so many people have responded and said like they've been wanting to try this. These are supposed to be really great products and all of that, so I was like, um, okay, I shall put it in a giveaway. If you want to enter to win the skincare set from Pericone MD, again, the link for the giveaway will be in the description box down below. My 12 days of giveaways are super, super simple. The only thing you have to be doing is to be a YouTube subscriber. There's just a couple of bonus entries to go along with it, but really that's it, just being a YouTube subscriber. I've been having a lot of fun giving back across the 12 days. And don't forget to check me out on Instagram and also Snapchat because I have a giveaway every single day coming up for the next handful of days here. So I did want to touch on that, but but uh, jumping into the fail category, we are starting off with first. I have a set of lashes here, and you guys might know that when I don't get along with lashes, it's pretty devastating. <laughs> so these lashes are from Tarte Cosmetics. I recently picked up, it was called the Man Eater set from Ulta. It had a pair of Tarte lashes, the Tarte Lash Adhesive. It had a mini Man Eater mascara in there. And then there was one other eye product that was in there, but I was really excited to try out these lashes. I had never tried Tarte lashes, so I was super pumped about them. And unfortunately, these just did not work out for me. And I just found them to be pretty difficult to work with. I thought the band was pretty difficult to work with. With. and overall I just didn't love the way that they looked on my eyes and what I thought was interesting is that the actual lashes to me just kind of feel a little bit different. Um, I've recently tried the Huda Faux Mink Lashes and I really did not like them and I've also tried the Ardell Faux Mink Lashes and I really didn't like those lashes either and to me these kind of feel like faux mink. The, the band not necessarily because I've realized the faux mink bands are just kind of like really large and thick and stiff but but these it's not so much the band it's like the actual lashes that I don't like they're like hard and I don't know they're just they just were not my favorite but the band I also thought was pretty difficult to get the hang of I didn't feel like they looked great on my eyes um they're $12 if you buy the lashes separately which isn't the most affordable but it's not the most expensive for lashes either but I don't know I just I could not get down with the Tarte lashes unfortunately and that made me really sad because I love lashes. Items that I was trying out in November that just did not work for me are these eyeliners from NARS. And I believe these are like $24, $26 eyeliners. So that is really, really pricey. These were sent to me uh, in PR with the Man Ray collection that NARS did pretty recently. I do have a video reviewing the full collection. I think it's my holiday hits and misses video. I can leave it down below. And for me, most of the collection worked out really well, but there were a few items in there that were misses for me. And I've been trying these out and trying these out, and unfortunately, I just cannot get the hang of them. These are the Velvet Eyeliners. This one in Santiago, um, it was kind of like a brown, bronzy color, but again, it just does not really go on the waterline. It was, it was really tough, and I felt like I was kind of pulling, and it wasn't super pigmented, but the purple one, like, barely showed up at all, which was really... Uh, pretty disappointing like even to do with the swatch on my hand I'm really having to dig in the purple one is called Nagoya so those are the two swatches of the eyeliners here but again to pay over $20 for an eyeliner that like is really not very pigmented doesn't show up on the waterline like Mm -mm. These are a big miss for me. So moving into the fine category, I really like putting in the fine category because there's some items that I just would be lying if I said that they were my favorites, but they weren't absolute fails, but I still think maybe some people could like them or get a good use out of them or I like them enough that I still want to mention them. Again, I just want to be able to be like, this is my favorite. I just love it and that sort of thing. Uh, the first item that I have here is from Benefit. This is the Boeing Brightening Concealer. I picked this up for my trying subscribers favorite makeup video and I 
know that Benefit has a lot of different Boing concealers and I think they used to have this product in the past and then they've kind of like revamped it a bit uh, and they had quite a few different options in there. I picked up the brightening for me personally because that's what I prefer in a concealer but they have a lot of different options and these are $20. They come in this little pan here and I did like the brightening because I can definitely tell that it has kind of like a like a salmony peachy kind of undertone to it which with my skin tone helps brighten and lift my under eyes I really liked it for that like when I need help if I have dark circles or things like that and I just want some brightness under there I can even just mix this with another concealer too and just put a few dots really close here especially on the inner part of my eye which is where I get the dark circles wearing this by itself as well I just take my Sephora 57 brush which is a small concealer brush and I dab it in there and then dab it right onto my under eyes the only thing that I don't really really love about this concealer and why I wouldn't consider it a love is that I find it to be really really creasy um, so whenever I use this I have to use like a setting powder with it um, like an actual like baking powder like you need to like heavy duty set it it's not just something that you can kind of like quickly dust a setting powder on the under eyes which is personally my favorite way to set my under eyes these days sometimes the baking powders are just a bit too much especially in the winter when I can get a bit drier they're just a little bit too much but I know that I need to use that with this product otherwise it will crease a ton like very quickly by the time you get done doing your makeup this is already like a creasy mess so it's kind of like you have to set it right away and set it pretty strongly um so that's the the one downfall i found with it but other than that i really do like the benefit boing I have some more eyeliners in here and these are from maybelline i've had these for a while but i haven't been reaching for them as often as i could because they're metallic liners and i just don't do those sorts of looks a ton so i've had these for a while i didn't want to review them until i had actually been able to try them out like several times so it's kind of taken me a while to get this review up for them. Um, but these are their Master Precise Ink Metallic Eyeliners. These are $7.99 at Ulta and they come in a huge variety of colors. Maybelline sent me quite a few. I pulled out these two because these two have really been my favorite colors. I believe I used the purple in a video. I think it was a first impressions trying drugstore makeup is when I tried this. But this green one I've also used and I think it's really pretty. I like this for when I am not really doing any sort of eyeshadow looks and then I will just come in and do like a really pretty wing on top. I think the green is really popping. These are definitely very metallic and very pretty. Uh, uh, they're a little bit challenging, like a little bit tricky for me to get the hang of with the applicator. It's just, I, I think my problem is, is that it's a pretty flimsy applicator. So kind of, it, it can just kind of like go everywhere. It definitely took me a couple tries to get the hang of the applicator and actually learning how to make a wing with it because I'm not the best at that, but they're very pigmented. They show up very well. Um, they do dry down completely. I didn't have any issues with like transferring or things like that. Again, it's just not something that I wear on, you know, a really regular basis, which is why it's taking me so long to review these. So they're not necessarily a favorite of mine, but I still think that they're good eyeliners. So again, that's why I like having this section in here. If you really like metallic liners or like funky colors, because the majority of these, I believe, are kind of like, you know, the funner type of colors. Um, I would definitely check them out for $7.99. I don't think that's a bad price at all, but yeah, these are pretty good. So next up, I have another item from the Tarte set that I was talking about that it came with their lash adhesive. This is the Tardis Pro Lash Adhesive. This is just a little mini guide that was in there. The full size uh, cost $9. This is a brush on lash adhesive. So this is what the applicator looks like, and it is a black adhesive. I was really excited to try this because I'd been hearing from Katie or Lester looks how much she loved the Tarte lash adhesive. I was like, well, I want to try it out too. So when I saw that Tarte set and all that it came with, I was pretty excited about it and decided to try this out. Now, there are some pros and cons to this, and so it's just going to be like personal preference on this one. The good thing is, is I don't mind the applicator. I don't mind the brush on to the lashes versus like the regular duos that I use. It's more of like a squeeze tube. I don't mind that at all. Sometimes I kind of wonder if I'm getting enough product on there, but typically it's it's fine so i don't mind that i like that it's black like i said it definitely dries down pretty quickly i don't have to wait as long with this one as i would the duo because it does get tacky because when you are putting lash adhesive on you don't want to just put it on and then put the lash on because the glue is going to be too wet and it's going to like be really slippery and move around on your eye and make a mess so you do need to wait with the duo i typically wait like 60 to 90 seconds with this it's like 30 to 40 seconds and it's dried down and ready to go. So that part is nice. 
It does hold the lashes on very well, which is great. I mean, the, your, your lashes are gonna stay on. And once you put them down and you stick them down, they are down. So that can be a con because if you're someone who puts lashes down and then you kind of have to wiggle them around in place, you really can't do it with this one because once you set it, your, your lashes are not moving. The con part is that it can be kind of challenging to get lashes off with this. I typically can just go in and remove my lashes and I have no problem doing that. But when I wear the Tarte Lash Adhesive, I have to like kind of prep my eyes, like already start to use a makeup remover on my eyes to loosen up the adhesive. So that part is interesting. And then the lash adhesive sticks around on your eyes like it does not go away go to bed at night remove my lashes you know take all my eye makeup off and i think i'm golden and i wake up the next morning and i have clumps of adhesive in my lashes and it just it sticks around forever no matter what you know eye makeup remover i'm using no matter what it is no matter if i, th I think i got it all off nope it's still there so it's not something that i because i wear lashes almost every single day i can't use this lash adhesive more than one day in a row because then i I have no chance. I will have residue from the lash adhesive just forever it seems like. So I really have been busting this out only on like special occasions when I know that like I'm getting ready in the morning, I'm not coming home till late at night or like I'm going to a concert, I'm gonna get sweaty, I need my lashes stuck on the entire night. Then I will go for this, but just for my more casual days, I cannot because it's like too heavy duty. If you have tried the House of Lashes lash adhesive, I would compare this to that adhesive because it's the same thing. It's really nice, it dries down quickly, your lashes stay in place all night, but the residue, the leftover lash adhesive is just too insane. So that's why it can't be a favorite, but it's not a complete fail. That's what I think about the Tarte Lash Adhesive. Next up, I have a very expensive lip product to chat about. I did get a PR package, um, a couple of them actually, from Burberry recently, and I've been kind of like working my way through the package, um, trying everything out, and then putting the reviews and the videos as I go along. So this month, I have a lip product to talk about. This is called their Lip Color Contour, and it's in the shade Medium Number 3. These are $31 on the Sephora website I was looking at, and this is what the product looks like. So it's a pretty interesting pen. Like at first I was like, is this just supposed to be a lip liner? I'm not 100% sure, but uh, as I used it, I basically just lined my lips with it first and then just filled them the rest of the way in. It is a regular, you know, kind of like creamy lipstick. It's not a liquid lipstick. It's not really like glossy at all, but it, it leaves a nice like cream finish to the lips. It's not what I'm wearing today. I have a, I have a new lipstick on today. I got an order in and I was like, I have to do it. So this is from Dose of Colors. Uh, but the thing that I really like about this one is that I think it's a really nice shade. It's kind of like a nude brown, but it like strangely enough has some pink tones to it. One thing that I've kind of noticed with Burberry lipsticks is that I really like the shade selections where they kind of look just you know, just like looking at them, I'm like, oh, you know, it's like your basic nude or it's your brown nude, but then putting it on, I don't know how to explain it, but that's kind of like what has been drawing me to the Burberry lipsticks because I have another like velvet lipstick from them and I just am, am so attracted to that color even though it's a nude. I just feel like it's it's something a little bit different when you actually put it on. And I like this one just fine. Again, it's not a fail, um, but I wouldn't be able to classify it as a favorite. It's a nice, creamy lipstick. I remember uh, I've had it on early in the morning and I kept it on all the way through the evening. Um, it lasted through my lunch pretty well. Like, kind of the, like the creaminess factor kind of wears away, but the color, like the pigment on the lips sticks around for a pretty long time. So I think that is good. You know, $31 is pretty expensive for just a regular lipstick. You know, I understand it's Burberry, so, you know, that's kind of how it goes with these high-end luxury type of brands, but I thought it was pretty good. I do think that the velvet lipsticks from Burberry are better. Like if you really, really want to try out a Burberry lipstick, you got your heart set on trying one out. Would I suggest the lip contour shades or would I suggest the velvet lipsticks? I would suggest the velvets. I think that they're just a little bit better. They're not a full on drying liquid lipstick, but I like them just a touch more. But this was still, this was still pretty good. I enjoyed it and I will keep wearing it. I'm gonna move over to my favorite sections. If you are new to my videos, I kind of do a little 
a few different things for my favorite category. I do, of course, talk about makeup and beauty, but first I will chat about a beauty influencer, um, just, you know, a friend of mine or a favorite influencer of mine who I love watching their videos and things like that. Typically how I choose the influencer to put in these videos is they are who I feature in my monthly newsletter. I do send out a newsletter typically every month, sometimes every other month, and I just have a few, like, more product reviews in there. I talk about, you know, new products in there or what I'm eyeing or what I recently purchased or just anything like that um, and it's all beauty related and then I also do an interview with a fellow beauty influencer in there I just ask a few questions have them answer it and then feature them uh, feature their social links and things like that so for the month of December I already sent out my newsletter which <laughs> I was pretty proud of that but I featured my friend Lisa Stevens I recently did a collab video with Lisa we are doing a skincare project pan together so I will be doing another video with her coming up here in the next couple of weeks we'll be doing our one month check-in for our skincare videos so I will leave those videos linked down below. I, of course, will have Lisa's channel linked down below as well. I hope that you will go check her out. She does a lot of, like, project pans as well. Like, she's super good at those. How I found her was through her project pans. Um, her declutters are so good, and she has been doing a lot of declutters. Um, like, when I first kind of started finding her, she was doing so many of those, and I enjoyed them so much. She does Shop My Stash. I know right now she's doing Vlogmas, and it's been super cool to kind of get... Um, you know, a little bit different side of her with the vlogmas too and like her family life and things like that. So I really enjoy her videos. I think that you guys would too, especially if you do enjoy my channel. I think you would really enjoy Lisa's. So I will have her linked down below and I hope that you will go check her out. Another item that I do in my favorites is I do talk about some book favorites as well. If you guys do not know, I am a published author of five novels and I am also a book blogger. I started a book blog all the way back in 2009. I do a bunch of book reviews on there, author interviews. I do a lot of like marketing, editing, proofreading, for the book industry as well. So that's a big part of my life. Um, so after I get through talking about makeup and beauty favorites, I will touch on, I think I have three books that I reviewed in November on Chiclet Plus that I gave a five-star review to, which is the best that you can review a book on Amazon. Um, so I will chat about those after the makeup and beauty favorites. So if you're a book lover like me or you wanna get some book recommendations, stay tuned for that. But jumping into my makeup favorites. This first one is really gonna come as no surprise because I've been talking about it everywhere. It's made it into several of my videos videos, but just in case you're new here or you haven't heard the word, I love the Urban Decay Afterglow 8 Hour Powder Highlight in Sin. This turned into a new favorite highlight of mine and I'm grateful to a lot of you guys because this was another one that I put in my Trying Subscribers favorite makeup video. So I will have that one linked down below in case you didn't see it, but I tried this one and I was like, oh my gosh, completely blown away at these highlights. Sin in particular is one that I absolutely love and one that so many people recommend it that I try. I think it's beautiful. I think it's blinding if you like a blinding highlight. It is just gorgeous and I'm super excited because I did order the new highlight palette that Urban Decay put out, the ONS highlight palette. It is on its way to me and I'm super stoked about that. So this highlight definitely made me want to purchase that highlight palette. I have another product here from Trying Subscribers New Makeup. You guys, you guys were good at this one. And Tinka, I have you to thank for this uh, Makeup Forever recommendation. This is a Artist Face Color Contour Powder in S112 is the shade name. Uh, I did purchase a couple different items from Makeup Forever for that video, but this contour shade is just like calling to me so much. I love it. It comes in this little pan like this. It is magnetic, so I typically just have it in a Z palette, so I just popped it out to share about it. And I really, really like this one. If you are my skin tone, you would probably make this contour shade work for you. They are 23 dollars or Sephora has a special I think Makeup Forever website does too but I got mine from Sephora where you can actually either pick two products or you can pick three products and you can get them for a little bit of a discount and they also come in the pan that you can put them directly in. I have that option as well but yeah this contour shade I reach for it so so often. I think it is gorgeous. I'm constantly pulling out that Z palette that has this in here. So this contour shade from Makeup Forever was a big favorite of mine. So I did just recently talk about this one in my Sephora VIB sale haul follow-up video. If you guys haven't seen that one yet, that one is full of reviews in there. So I will have that listed down below. But like, I love this product so much that I wanted to mention it again. There's a lot of hits and misses in there and I try not to overlap too much, especially that I just posted that video. I think it was Sunday's video. I try not to overlap too much in there, but this one I have to overlap. This is the Ulla Hendrickson Pore Balance Facial Sauna Scrub. I love this guy so much. This is what I currently have in my shower and it's just my favorite scrub right now. I picked up the three glowing scrubs, I think is what it was called. These set from Ulla Hendrickson during the Sephora VIB sale. It was $25 for three minis and I'm having a blast. I love this one so much. I'm already for certain that I will put 
that I will repurchase this in the full size. I want to try out the two other scrubs at first though, but then I feel like this is going to be the winner. Uh, it's super cool because it says it's the sauna scrub. When you first put it on and like start to rub your fingers together, it's super, super warm. And when you put it on your face, it's like warm and luxurious. And then I let it sit. I use it in the shower. I let it sit while I like condition my hair and things like that and you can feel it like turn cooling on the skin. It is so cool and I mentioned that in my Sephora video and so many of you guys said that you've tried it too and you absolutely love it as well so very very impressed with the scrub from Ula Hendrickson. I have a couple items here from Pure. I did receive both of these from Octoly. I chatted about them I think it was like last month on my Instagram but then I keep trying them more and more and I was like you know what I need to put these in a favorite section I just I reach for them so much I need to put them in my makeup monthly as well so this first one here is the contour diaries and this is a contour palette and I have been reaching for this so much so it has the six different shades in here and like I mentioned earlier I haven't so much been into baking powder but I've really been into um, you know these shades to set underneath my eyes as long as I'm not using a concealer like the Benefit Boing, uh, but like the Urban Decay All Nighter and items like that, like these are really, really nice to use. I mostly use Charm on my under eyes, but sometimes I use Dream as well if I want a bit more of like a yellow powder. And then Secret is what I've been using as a contour out of here, and then Passion is what I'm using as a bronzer. So I really, I don't use these two um, really much for anything, but these four, I feel like I really get a lot of use out of. They're really big pans. I just feel like I reach for it so often when I'm going for like my contour, my bronzer, or if I'm wanting to reach for a palette, I'm typically reaching for this one from Pure. It is $32, so it's a pretty pricey, but for me, I've been reaching for it so much. And then the other one that I have here is the one that surprised me even more. I like contouring and bronzing. I like contour and face palettes, so I wasn't maybe like super surprised at this one, but the Soiree Diaries, this is an eyeshadow palette. I feel like this was really getting a lot of mixed reviews. I think this came in like a boxy charm and so a lot of people were reviewing it and like I saw some really bad reviews on it. I saw some really glowing reviews on it and I was like, oh man, I don't know what to think. So I did request it from my actually free store and they agreed to send it to me. And at first, like the first time I used it, I was like, oh, okay, decent. Like, you know, I could probably put it in the fine category. And then I reached for it again and I was like, actually, I really like that look that I came up with. And then I would find myself reaching for it like just because like, okay, I need to pick an eyeshadow palette and I'm reaching for this guy and I'm like, wait a second, I really do like this eyeshadow palette. It's really nice too to pull out, um, you know, if I'm using a glitter or if I'm doing, um, you know, maybe the metallic liner look or just something a little bit funkier, but I just need like some sort of, you know, neutral base to lay down. Then obviously, you know, you have a lot of neutrals in here, but these shimmers are really really nice and I feel like that's what kind of what made this palette kind of stand out to me. I think I've worn every single shimmer now on my lids and I just think they are so nice. I do typically use a damp brush with them but when I first put the shimmers on they still show up really nice. Like they do not need a lot of help. I just found that to be awesome. I like all the neutrals in here. This is definitely kind of like my eyeshadow palette. Um, it does have a nice mirror as well but overall I was very impressed with this. So I was a little bit surprised at this. I didn't think I would enjoy it as much as I did but I really enjoyed both of these the packaging like the marble packaging I think is super cute too but I like pure they're one of my favorite brands I was really grateful to be able to try these out and a little surprised that they both ended up as a favorite so another favorite here my friend Candace sent me a really amazing package not that long ago and it had a ton of makeup products in there and I've been working my way through so many of the items and finding so many new favorites and fun ones to try out but I have to give a special mention to this one because I, this was another one that I did not expect to love. Like when I saw it, I got excited, but I was like, you know, it's probably just gonna be fine, right? Nope, uh, this is the Marc Jacobs. It's called the High Filter, and it says hashtag Instamark on it, in 60, I believe. And inside you have like a setting powder and then also a bronzer. I mean, the pans are huge. I've seen a lot of these items from Marc Jacobs floating around. You have huge pan sizes, you have a huge mirror. And I know that maybe a lot of people will be like, oh, that's great. You think that that's a wonderful bronzer. Yes, it is. I really enjoy that bronzer. I reach for it a lot. But the main reason that I'm reaching for this is for the setting powder. I love it. I love it. I think it's fantastic. I, I reach for it all the time. It's what I have set on my under eyes today. It has a bit of a yellow tinge to it, but I think it makes the under eyes look so freaking good. This has kind of become like my new favorite is reaching for this setting powder. Typically, if I'm not going into a palette, like that pure one, I'm just kind of like a palette girl. Like if I'm reaching for a couple different items and they're all in the same face palette, 
then I'm just going to use it for all of it. But if I'm using a different bronzer or a different contour shade or not a palette, I'm typically always going for the Marc Jacobs one. This is a price little baby at $49. So big thank you to Candace for sending it to me and letting me try it out. But I, I'm telling you guys, I can't believe how often I reach for this. I even took it traveling with me over when we left for Thanksgiving. And when I came back that next day, I was getting ready to do my makeup and I could not find this. And I was devastated. I was like, where did, how did I lose it? Someone surely came in here and just stole my Marc Jacobs palette. It was still in my bag. I'd forgotten to unpack it, but I was like, I was like crushed for a moment. I was like, how did I lose it? So this one surprised me, but I love it. Another one that I truly did not expect to love is from Sigma Beauty. This is the Chroma Glow Shimmer and Highlight Palette. I am an affiliate with Sigma and they did send this to me and I don't get everything from Sigma. Um, it's almost like every other release or something it seems like that I will get the products. And when I saw this one come out, I kind of had that moment of like, oh, that'd be really cool if they sent it to me because I wouldn't buy something like this myself. But I was like, this is one where like I won't be super bummed out if they don't. Even though I love highlights, I just was like, Looking at the inside of the palette, I thought, I just don't think I would love this. I don't feel like I would get a ton of use out of these particular highlight shades. I really was surprised at how much I ended up actually really enjoying this one. I just worried that the colors would be a little bit too funky for me. Like, I know the iridescent craze is still hanging on and people like doing these kind of like funkier colors for highlights, but that's never really been like my personal vibe. But And so when I got this, I was like, okay, you know, I still need to review it. I still want to try it out. And I started playing with it and I definitely was sticking to like these types of colors. Uh, Ambrosia is like one of my favorites. I really do enjoy that shade in there, um, but Peaceful is really nice too. That one is a nice, um, kind of more like subtle shimmer. It's not too overpowering and it's not like a full on, like how it says it's also a shimmer and highlight palette. That one to me is definitely a nice subtle shimmer. But I was like, okay, I need to like, you know, step outside of my comfort zone. I need to try something a little bit more adventurous. And the only one that doesn't really work for me is this Lush right here. It's just too dark for my skin tone, but Bedazzle, Zeal, and Felicity are all very nice. I did an Instagram tutorial recently. I was wearing Zeal on my cheeks, and I think what I like about this one, uh, and, and, and you know, some of the funkier tones in here, is that they aren't too overpowering. So it's kind of like a good way to try out the kind of crazier colors for highlights without it being like, ah, I have a stripe of blue on my cheek. It, that's what I realized with this palette and that's why I think that I ended up liking it so much. I don't know if you can tell even by the swatches is that this is just me. I went and then swipe for each of them, but they can be kind of just more a little bit on the subtle side, like the purple one, which is Felicity. That's definitely the one that has the most like pop to it, but that one is also really pretty on the eyes. I've used that one as an eye color with some of the purple looks, but Again, I got more use out of this palette than I really thought I was going to, and I actually have been gravitating towards it more and more, especially when I just want to do a bit of a funkier highlight, but like nothing like super duper crazy. I will tap into this one, but again, Ambrosia is that really nice, um, you know, kind of like my go-to regular highlight anyways. So I really do like that one. I like the mirror and I like the big pan sizes. I think that's all fantastic. So another surprise, another surprise. Did not expect to love this one either. The last beauty favorite I have is kind of random, but I really do love this. This is from Subbun Glory. It's the Righteous Butter Creamy Body Wash. <laughs> I'm telling you guys. I had to go in and take two items out of my shower, this and the Ula scrub, uh, to talk about in these favorites, but I did get a PR package from Soap and Glory not too long ago, and I've been trying out a bunch of the products, and one thing I feel like I've realized about Soap and Glory is that I really like their skincare and like their body care products. I mentioned their overnight um, mousse. I think it was in last month's Makeup Monthly, but their makeup has actually made it into the fails part, but their skincare and their body items, I really do enjoy. It says this is a three-in-one to cleanse, shave, and moisturize, and it says it's super hydrating with over 25% moisture oils and butters, and it really is. It's like super thick and creamy when I put it onto my loofah in the shower, and it just feels like luxuriating in the shower, and it smells really good, and it just makes my skin feel nice. I like that it's not only the body cleanser, but it's super moisturizing at the same time, and I feel like I will want to repurchase this when I do run out of it, especially Especially for the winter time I feel like this would be really beneficial I mentioned in my I did my beauty empties live this past week on Thursday and I had a, a body wash in there and I was like you know what I really did like it but I don't think I'm gonna repurchase it because I found something I love even more and I would repurchase that and it was the soap and glory that I was referring to so this is only $12 so I don't feel like that's a bad price at all um, I've just been really really enjoying this 
Well, that is it for my makeup favorites for the month. So that's going to do it for the makeup and beauty portion. I will chat about the three books that I gave the five star review to, but I understand if this is where that you're going to stop watching this video in case you're not interested in the book favorites. But if this is where you leave, thank you guys so much for watching and I'm wishing you all a fabulous December. But if you would like to hear about some of the books that I absolutely loved in November, the first one I have is called A White Picket Fence and this is by Laura Branch Flower. I always want to say her last name wrong, but it's Branch Flower. This was a book that I chatted about uh, pretty in depth one day on my Snapchat because I actually dreamt about this book. Like that is how good it was. I couldn't stop thinking about it. I had a whole conversation over dinner with Mitch about it. It appeared in my dreams. Like it was just one of those books, but I will say that it was pretty tough to read. Uh, it, you know, it's it's really based off infidelity in the marriage and not everybody can read about those topics and I totally understand and it's hard for me to read some of the things that were in here because um, it just really it just really saddens you it, it, it just really it, it makes you devastated for a family that goes through something like that but it was so you know I was so emotionally invested at the same time into the story and I, I just thought it was so good like, I didn't want to put it down like I said I was talking to everybody including my husband who doesn't really read and he definitely doesn't read women's fiction but I was still talking to him about it and then I had to chat about it on my snapchat too so really really good really powerful story. The next one that I gave five stars to is called The Boyfriend Swap and this is by Meredith Shore. Meredith is an author friend of mine I've known her for many years I have met her at least once I want to say it was twice at book signing events and I, I just think that she's a great author. I love reading her books. She writes really, really solid chiclet. So if you like that genre, definitely check her out. The Boyfriend Swap is about exactly what the title is. It's about two women who don't know each other. They end up meeting through a mutual acquaintance and they decide that they should swap boyfriends over the holiday season because um, each boyfriend has a certain quality that their parents would want and that their current boyfriend doesn't have. So they decide to swap the boyfriends. And I thought it was really intriguing because when I first started it, and you know, I read the synopsis, I was like, why would these guys go along with it? But then you understand why the guys go along with it as well. And it's just super funny to see um, a very chick lit, a very, like so many humorous moments, but so many moments that also just kind of made you think as well. And I just, I really enjoyed it. I laughed the whole way through. I finished it super, super quickly. It did not take me long to read it all. So that one is The Boyfriend Swap by Meredith Shore. Final book I have is called A Beautiful Messy Love. This is by Tess Woods. Tess Woods is another author who I consider to be a friend. We message each other quite a bit. And her debut novel is still one of my absolute all-time favorite books. I'll have that one linked down below as well. It's called Love at First Flight. So, so good. I was very excited when she put out a new novel. She asked if she could send it to me, which was super nice of her. Um, I do mostly get all of my books in PR in case anybody is wondering um, because being a book blogger, I, I get... 99.9% .9 of the books from my blog from authors or publishing houses. So Tess did send this one to me and oh, this one is also super intense. It's a longer book um, so I will point that out but it is very intense and it covers so many different subjects that we don't always hear about different uh, you know politics from other countries. I mean it, it just was so fascinating and intriguing to read but Tess writes so good even though this was a very long book I read it very quickly and I read the hard copy version of it instead of on my kindle which sometimes can be harder for me because I don't feel like I can pull out a paperback all of the time whereas I can with my kindle I still read it super fast her writing is very fast paced as well even for a longer book she doesn't waste time with unnecessary scenes unnecessary stories dialogue any of that it jumps right to the point right to the point I don't really know what else to say about Tess's writing other than she's one of my my favorite authors and I just I can't wait to see what else that she comes up with because her writing is so superb so beautiful messy love by Tess Woods I highly recommend okay so that is going to do it for my makeup monthly for the month of November I really hope that you guys enjoyed seeing all of the products that I've been trying out and my thoughts on them let me know some comments down below what have you been loving on or not so loving on throughout the month of November anything that surprised you because like I said I feel like I had a lot of surprising favorites in there that I didn't think I was going to love as much as I did so I would love to know I hope everybody has a wonderful December again I have my 12 days of giveaway the fifth day will be linked down below and make sure to check me out on snapchat I'm samantha.march that is where tomorrow's giveaway will be and I will also have one coming up again on Instagram so of course if you guys did enjoy this video I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up I hope that you will also consider subscribing before you go and I'll catch you guys in tomorrow's video. Bye.